I grew up watching Tom Dore. I mean, the Bulls were the biggest thing in my life, Tom Dore. So, like, so I was like, Mine too. I know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know. Uh, but I was like, oh, my God, to Tom Dore's going to be there. This, yeah, man. This, this is so damn cool. So it's an honor to meet you. I know we've talked before, but uh, thank you for coming out to Harry Carey's to do this in person. This is awesome. I've had so much fun coming back to, to Harry's for so many years. And, uh, and to hear the, uh, the clip of me in red uh, with that Milwaukee game, been a long time since I've actually been able to talk to my partner. You know, we were golf partners, fishing partners, breakfast, lunch, dinner partners, broadcast partners. We did everything together for 17 years. And when he passed, it was just like a part of me was gone. And on the same day, you know, I'm driving. I knew Johnny was close. I knew he was about to go. But then I hear that Norm passed. Norm oh, Van Leer passed. Same day. God, guys, I, honest to God, I was driving. I had to pull off the road. I bet. I started crying. I had to pull off the road because I just, to, admit, to, to lose two great buddies like that, was uh, that was one of the toughest days. I bet, I bet. Norm, um, a beloved teammate of ours at the score yeah. for a lot of years. Yeah. I was a young producer, and he couldn't have been cooler and nicer. And we would talk music and Zeppelin and yeah, whatever. Exactly. And he gave me my first shot of wheatgrass. Stones, stones, stones. But he gave me my first shot of wheatgrass. That guy got addicted to yep. wheatgrass from yep. Whole Foods later on in his life. But like, it, you know, it's it, you and and Red. It was obvious what the friendship was, what the relationship was. Danny, weren't those broadcasts so warm? That's what made it so cool on the extra level. Yeah, you're watching Jordan and watching these guys and the assembly of these teams together, but you two were having so much fun together. It's just, it, it, there's a reason that it's such a warm part of all of our sports memories. It's not just the teams. I appreciate that. Yeah, it, it, it was... Um it was really something from day one. You know, you're replacing JD. Jim Durham was really a legend. One of the best who ever did it. Absolutely. And so to replace him, I knew it was going to be an impossible job. You can't, you, you can't win at that job. So you just be yourself. But from day one, Red and I just hit it off. And we do stuff in the off season. Not too much in the off season because you're there every day together. But golf and fishing, he wanted to do, I tell you, he had a great idea. He said, we need to start our own golf tournament, but it's got to be a fishing tournament too. <laughs> and we get to hit the best lake. You and I are partners. Uh -huh. We get to hit the best lake first and, and screw everybody else. <laughs> Catch all the best fish. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we don't care how we play golf. That didn't matter. So it was a tournament, you know, maybe for charity or maybe for mm. other people. I don't know. But it's really about you and Red getting out there fishing. Exactly. That was the whole key. <laughs> that we'd go to. Speaks, we need to do a charity golf event <laughs> right, right, right away. The nicest courses. Please, slide yeah. in my DMs. Start we, the bidding. We'd go to Cantini, and I probably shouldn't say this, but other, okay. other courses as well. And we'd go on the days they're closed, like on Monday. We'd play a little golf, yeah. but we were generally out there, you know, looking for bass. You know who does this still and always did it at score golf outings of your is our colleague Dan Bernstein. Bernstein would show yeah, up yep. at the golf outings. With his pole. With his yep. pole. Yep. And be like, all right, I'll yep. be over here <laughs> and just go fishing, you know? <laughs> when Tom Dore and Johnny Redker did it, it was cool. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> when, but when Bernstein, Bernstein did it, it's like, quite. Yeah, it's like yeah. What, 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 are, what are you doing? Uh, so... What was your relationship like, and like how were you introduced to uh, to Harry Carey? I was in Miami, Florida, at a little tiny station that no. I mean, if you were a block away from the sticks, you couldn't hear the station. Hmm. But I called the Cubs and the White Sox and got both of them on our station. They were looking for sports, and I thought Cubs, White Sox, why not? So I got to be buddies with Jack Rosenberg. The legend Jack Rosenberg. Official scorer. Uh, no, different Jack oh, Rosenberg. Oh, different Jack Rosenberg. This is Jack Rosenberg from WGN. Got it. The, who did uh, Jack Rosenberg. <laughs> Rosie, Rosie was a, story, a million stories unto himself. I derailed you, my bad. And Vince Lloyd. Okay. So Vince Lloyd, the former Cubs voice, were in charge of uh, the di distribution rights. So... One day I was uh, going to move. I went to Austin, Texas, and I promised this is going somewhere. Yeah. Um, so I go to Austin, Texas, and I called Vince, and I said, Vinny, I need, I, I want to get Harry on. And he said, well, Harry really doesn't do this very often. I said, just once, 
one time, 10 minutes, I just want to talk to Harry. So he said, okay, here's his phone number, call him. I called Harry and I said, look, I'm just starting out in the business. I'm trying to learn a little bit. He could not have possibly been any better. He stayed on for an hour of the show. And then on the, at the end of the show says, ah, oh, kid, call me later. So I called him like 15 minutes later. And he says, let me tell you about how to be prepared for a broadcast. Oh, wow. Let me tell you about how to deal with the people at the top. Let me tell you about how to deal with coaches. Let me tell you how to deal with players. He walked me through everything. The things that nobody teaches you, he was there to teach me. So I talked to him two other times. And, and I told Dutchie the story this morning. One of the times was uh, he was on for about five minutes, and Dutchie says, Harry, I could hear, Harry, we got to go. We got to go. So Harry's like, uh, now what the heck do I do? You know, I, gotta, I told this guy I'd be on. So, but he, he left. But he was so good and so kind with his time. Man. You don't find legends like that. And later on in your career, you realize how precious that is. Oh, exactly. And so I've tried to do the same thing for a lot of different people. It's kind of amazing, like, to think about, you know, we all have rabbis in the business. Yeah. People that we you would. Have you, 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 ha have you have to. You have Absolutely. to. You have to, right? It is kind of unbelievable that one of yours was Harry Carey. Like, do you remember any of the specifics of the advice? Um, don't drink too much on the air. On the air. Uh, on the air. Okay, yeah. that's good. That's um, good. Solid. But no, it uh, was. Danny, how's your Budweiser? Yeah. It's a Bud Light, and I just had my first sip, and uh, it's a special occasion. <laughs> Timing was just too good. Yeah. But just treat people like It was a like tall draft, though. Treat people like you treat anybody else. He uh -huh. said the biggest star you know, for me would have been Michael Jordan, obviously, or the 12th guy all you deserve for you to be their buddy. Mm. Just be a nice guy. Don't try to be anything you're not. You know who also deserves that is the person who's guarding the press box door and the person at the yeah, coat check. Exactly. Right? And, exactly. And, and, and Harry did that with people. I bet yeah. you did too, Tom. Yeah. Harry, Harry tipped everybody mm -hmm. and tipped very well. And, and you just... You treat people well. Man, I, uh, I, I look at Tom Dore and I hear Tom Dore and all I think about, Danny, I've told you the story before when I was bartending and my shift would end at 2 a.m. and I would drive home as fast as I could safely and soberly <laughs> to get to my couch at 2.30 in the morning. To watch a replay? To watch, to a, replay, you, yeah. to yeah. watch a replay on Sports Channel of you and Johnny Red Kerr and those Bulls teams. And I didn't know. I had no cell phone. I didn't know what yeah, happened. Exactly. Yeah. Nobody told us. It was, it was new to me. And I can't tell you how many regular season Bulls games against Patrick Ewing and the Knicks or Young Shaq and the Orlando Magic or like how many games I watched in that way and stayed up with you till 4.30 or right, 5 I, in the I morning. Got a, I got a good Shaq story for you. Good. I'm sitting on the Bulls bench with Bill Cartwright. BC and I played in the All-American games with or against each other. So I've known BC Billy forever. And, and he looks at me, uh, Shaq runs by and he's like, said things you don't say on the radio but you know it's like oh my god you know you've read about this guy but you've never really seen him so bc's eyes got to be as big as they could be and you watching you, young Shaq, oh, and there's nothing like him. run across all the way across chicago stadium to go to the other uh go to the other basket and start warming up and i looked at bc and i said billy you know what that is he pauses for a second yeah, retirement. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's about right. That, that is about right. But, like, did you have a lot of people watching Bulls games overnight like, like me? And, like, would you, you would hear from people like that, right? We had people. We'd get people from Australia. I bet. We'd get people from Italy. We'd get people from England. Michael was a global icon. He really was. Uh, our ratings were off the charts. And Michael would get on the plane and he'd be like, you know, you owe me a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he wasn't wrong. And I'd, then I'd say, you know, he'd do the dust off. I was just going to ask you. I, 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 I've always wanted to ask you, how did the, the, the dust, how did it start? They, he, he, <laughs> he did it, it, on my he list. Did it one time, <laughs> right? He did it one time before I got there with JD, and they <laughs> did cough, and Michael liked it, you know, because it was a big reaction. And so we'd bring the umbrellas. We'd bring, one time Red, one time Red brings a <laughs> fan, the right? He brings these fans. And these just these little handheld fans. And so Michael does the dust off. We hold the fan, and the dust blows in his eyes. Oh, God. 
There's a timeout. Johnny, Johnny hits the talk back so nobody could hear us on his and mine. And he says, can you see the headline in the Tribune tomorrow morning? Former Bulls announcers Tom Doerr and Johnny Kerr, he said that's going to be the headline because we're done. We got this stuff in Michael Jordan's eyes. We're over. It's, it's done. It was a great gig, wasn't it, Tommy? How often were you able to – I remember when you, we had you on during uh, the early stages of the pandemic just to tell stories. You told a story of uh, going to the movie theater with Jordan and, oh, God, and, and yeah. seeing Casino. Like, A, anything more on that that you remember. But, like, but B, like, <laughs> how often was that interaction something that was able to be done? It's almost impossible because Michael was uh, a, a captor in his own hotel room. He couldn't go anywhere. You know, we do things together but inside the hotel. Now, we do things in the off-season a little bit, but he just, he, he really was ca- a captive in his own hotel room, a captive in his own world. They're you just, golf with him? You play golf with him. We've gone to dinner. We've, do, we've done a lot of things together, but on a fairly limited basis. Gotcha. The stories, just, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just, it must have been, everyone says like the Beatles or whatever, but you get your, you get this dream gig, right? You're yeah. the, of the broadcaster of the Bulls. My hometown. Right. And, and my, I got to see my mom, my brother, I got to see all kinds of people. And, and then, oh yeah, by the way, Michael Jordan. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> like, the, the gig is the dream gig, but then the dream gig comes with the greatest of all time. And we'd land in Miami at 3.30 in the morning after a home game and we're all just kind of leaning against the side of the bus, passed out. And on the way to the hotel, there are like 5,000 people. Hey! Screaming and yelling. You'd get to the hotel. There's all kinds of people there. It was, it was great. You know, we had a lot of fun with this team. The, the, it, the buzz was back this yeah. year. We hope I, they yeah, improve. Absolutely. Obviously, in the offseason. One more work, guy. Work to, one more guy. Is that what you I think? think one more guy? Need. Yep. Mm-hmm. What kind of guy? Guy can shoot. Three points and other stuff. You, you obviously you always need a three-point shooter, but they also need somebody inside, another inside guy that, you know, can. Yeah, that can physicality. Tom Dore, thank you very much for stopping by. Harry Carey is coming glad. on This is terrific. Really you, appreciate Tom. you guys having me on. This appreciate was fun. You.